let's take a quick recap of what we have looked at so far in the previous lectures we have seen that cloud is not entirely a new concept the idea has been around for a while uh, it dates back to early 1960s uh, when time sharing systems were in use for improving the utilization of mainframe systems by allowing access to those systems through thin clients and also we saw that there are different driving factors that have been important for the development and adoption of uh, cloud-based platforms particularly the economies of scale plays uh, an important role similarly the desire for small to medium enterprises and other larger enterprises as well uh, there is a desire to convert their capital expensive into operational expenses what it means is that you don't want to own and manage your own data centers rather you would want to go into more of a utility computing kind of a model where somebody else provides the basic uh, infrastructure computing infrastructure and manages it and you just rent it for the time you need it and also important aspect has been the ubiquitous network access as well as uh, uh, the maturing uh, virtualization technologies so let's look at uh, the classification of cloud-based platforms they are basically classified uh, based on two things one is uh, service model so first one is uh, infrastructure as a service uh, it offers the basic computing infrastructure such as storage uh, computing nodes networking basic networking so as a service so example of this is amazon web services uh, ec2 Elastic Compute Cloud and also Amazon's S3 that also falls into the category of uh, infrastructure as a service. The basic unit most typically offered is a virtual machine. Uh, for example, when you sign up for uh, Amazon Web Services EC2, you basically get a virtual machine which typically also have an operating system installed so that you can uh, remotely SSH into that virtual machine and do further configuration and uh, installation of whatever other software you might need. Second variant is called platform as a service. It offers additional services. For example, the cloud provider manages the stack, a software stack itself, and the consumer is offered ways to build and deploy their applications on such a platform example is google app engine google app engine provides various services for example uh, it gives you a runtime for your applications particularly web applications uh, it offers java based uh, runtime as well as python based runtime and also an experimental offering is there for go language developed by google uh, and also it offers different types of storage mechanisms so you just get a platform in the sense that you build your applications according to whatever API and services are offered by the platform provider and deploy it in the provider's infrastructure and beyond that you are not uh, burdened with managing and maintaining uh, the lower level infrastructural issues so in that sense, it offers certain additional services if you want to look at it that way. And the third important variant is software as a service. Uh, so as you would guess, it again restricts what a user can control of the platform. So in this case, uh, typically all you get is a software application to use and you get some abilities to configure and fine tune certain aspect of the software, but you have, you do not necessarily do any kind of a programming per se example is uh, salesforce.com also uh, google sites is another example of software as a service so in google sites if you have created a site you can configure how the site looks like for example you can choose various types of gadgets to include and you can choose the skin etc uh, to to create a particular type of a layout of the site now the second classification method is deployment model based what it means is that depending upon how you set up or deploy a cloud platform how a vendor or an enterprise if they are trying to set up 
uh, a cloud for themselves. So how do they set up such a cloud that also makes certain type of uh, variants, which is what we are going to look at. So the first one is a private cloud. It means that the cloud infrastructure that one is setting up, it is operated by and for an individual entity. For example, uh, a university might set up a private cloud uh, within its campus. Second is a public cloud. Again, uh, the difference here is that somebody sets up a cloud and sells it as a service. For example, Amazon Web Services, Rackspace and others. So it is available to general public as a utility and I and you can go to that utility and subscribe to the service. Third variant is a hybrid uh, where a public and a private or actually we should have had let's say the other variant also community cloud. In a hybrid variant you can have different types of clouds connected together by some standard protocols which are shared by the connecting clouds. Typically you would have a hybrid cloud when you want to have you know the best of both worlds you want to have the security and privacy of your private data center as well as you also want to have the elasticity and other scalability uh, 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 features or the benefits that a public cloud could offer so you can set up a private cloud uh, within your organization and scale out into a public cloud let's say so that would make a hybrid cloud a community cloud is uh, different where again multiple organizations or groups who have some shared goals they can come together and share their infrastructure to set up a cloud so in that sense it's a it's called a community cloud so it's not typically available to general public you and i probably may not be able to go and subscribe to it it's only for a shared interest closed group of organizations for example, three universities working on a similar uh, kind of research projects uh, which are very private to them. They might want to set up or share their uh, computing infrastructure to better utilize it as a whole and create a community cloud out of it. So let's look at the logical view of uh, cloud computing, how it looks. So what we have is at the core, we have uh, infrastructure as a service, as we discussed, where uh, you have different type of bare-bone hardware infrastructure for example compute storage or network and somebody might use infrastructure as a service to build on top of it a platform as a service cloud another variant you look at uh, is uh, software as a service somebody can use platform as a service to create a software as a service but it's not necessary that uh, any of these outer uh, rings like PaaS or SaaS, they don't necessarily have to depend on the inner rings. I can build a SaaS platform directly on my native hardware also. I mean, directly on a non-virtual regular platform also build some application and I can offer it uh, very well as a uh, software as a service. So similarly, I can build a platform as a service uh, uh, setup on my regular native uh, hardware, not necessarily on an infrastructure as a service cloud. So in that sense, uh, there isn't any dependency of that sort. Uh, but typically when you view these things together, you see this uh, progression is kind of natural in terms of what level of the computing resources or entities each of these variants is dealing with. For example, as I said, IAS, Infrastructure as a Service, is dealing with bare bones computing resources such as compute, block storage, network, etc platform means it's a platform where the developers can use certain APIs, programming languages, etc. and other services to build their business applications. Software as a service, again, it's just offering some sort of a uh, uh, specialized software, for example, collaboration, communication, or even finance applications or a learning management system and so on. So that is offered to the clients as a service. And again, the finally clients could be diverse set of devices. It could be regular uh, uh, desktops or laptops, tablets or handheld devices like smartphones and so on. Uh, 
so another view is like this again it's uh, kind of depicting a very similar information but slightly uh, uh, aligned with how, where the virtualization is placed for example uh, so you have at the bottom uh, physical servers physical hardware and on top of it you must have some sort of a virtual uh, virtualization layer uh, to achieve the infrastructure as a service and then for a platform as a service you need to have some sort of operating system on top of that you put your middleware uh, that constitutes uh, the stack the platform stack and similarly for software as a service you will have your applications and services and you see on the left uh, you see the examples there for SaaS you have Google, Google Apps, Salesforce, Twitter APIs and so on and for the past things, uh, examples are uh, LAMP stack, Ruby on Rails, etc. Uh, and so on. So let's also look at uh, various stakeholders in this whole uh, cloud ecosystem. On the left, if you see, cloud providers are an important stakeholder where you can have different types of uh, cloud. You can have uh, private community public or hybrid as we talked and you could have service model based variations like uh, infrastructure as a service, SPAS and SaaS etc. Uh, and also stakeholders in this side uh, are data center specialists uh, which, which manage let's say the data center for a PaaS or any of these uh, uh, cloud providers. Uh, they could further have energy consultants or the cooling specialists and so on and cloud consumers they can have enterprise level decision makers who make make decisions about whether to adopt certain type of a cloud platform in their organization or not and also you can have solution architects who have to devise solutions for addressing different business applications needs and also software programmers who actually develop software for these uh, cloud-based platforms so they are a, uh, a important stakeholder and similarly the enterprise support and operation staff who after the platform has been set up let's say or the applications somebody has built on these platforms they have to support these applications so they are another important stakeholders uh, why I'm highlighting all these stakeholders is because as we progress through the class further uh, we'll be trying to bring out the characteristics of different cloud platforms which will be important to address the concerns of different type of stakeholders so in that sense it's important to understand who are the key stakeholders in this ecosystem moving to the right we see uh, infrastructural component providers they are another important uh, stakeholder uh, key amongst them is virtualization software providers for example the guys who provide you with the hypervisors such as VMware uh, Zen, KVM, Linux, LXC for operating system based virtualization for example and then we have uh, infrastructure as a service frameworks provider the guys who build software that lets you create a infrastructure as a service cloud examples are Open Nebula, Eucalyptus, Nimbus and so on and for pass component providers the guys who will provide the software for offering application building stacks for example Drupal, PHP, MySQL and so on. So, so it's important to keep in mind where an individual fit in this whole ecosystem. So some of you may fit in let's say a uh, uh, solution architects role and some of us could be let's say in uh, software programmers role. So having looked at this uh, what are our goals in the class we want to look at the software architectural aspects of cloud-based applications and cloud-based platforms so what it means is that when you build software applications what aspects of the cloud platforms you need to mitigate or what aspects of a cloud platforms you could leverage to address the needs of your business application. Looking at this quality attributes which you have to build into your applications for example all the star abilities, scalability, availability, reliability and so on that one has to build into a software 
they don't come for free you need to look at an underlying platforms characteristics to see whether you can build certain characteristic for example it's not uh, uh, easy to build highly available software without requiring certain support from the underlying platform so it doesn't come free so you have to design it into the system by having a knowledge of the underlying platforms so in that sense we are going to look at various characteristics of the cloud based platforms and virtualization uh, platforms so you need a sound architecture to ensure these things i mean to guarantee a reasonable response time for example similarly to keep the data in a consistent state when multiple users are trying to access your application and similarly efficiently utilizing the cpu cycles and storage and also harness the cloud or other platforms uh, to the best that you can but what we are not probably going to get into in the subsequent lectures in this class is we are not going to look at very low level coding of uh, how you really write an application we will cover concepts we will look at some examples also but we are not going to really look at uh, uh, the coding of various cloud based apis and so on so see you in the next lecture